A road trip starts tonight in the Valley of the Sun. We are in Phoenix, Arizona. Chase Field, the home of the Arizona Diamondbacks. And it starts a four-game series tonight. And there are Brewers fans here at Chase Field, downtown Phoenix. It is 102 degrees outside. It is cool and comfortable inside with the AC on blast. Hi, everybody. Brian Anderson along with Bill Schroeder. Telly Hughes is our reporter tonight. We are delighted to have you with us. And we get the air tonight with news. And the first trade chip falls for the Milwaukee Brewers. And Rocca Ramos Ramirez on his way to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah, you know what's going to happen at some point. Somebody from the Brewers is going to get traded. Well, Ramos Ramirez is the guy. Found out this morning he's going to be heading to Pittsburgh. He's probably going to be in the lineup on Saturday. But reports say that Ramirez somewhat happy to go back to Pittsburgh where it all started for him. Really put together a nice time here with the Milwaukee Brewers at 284 batting average. They're off to a slow start this year, but really came on. Now he's going to be playing a lot of third base over with the Pirates, and that means Hernan Perez is going to get a lot of opportunities. His season started in Detroit, didn't get any playing time at all. Well, he was getting some off and on starts here with the Brewers, mostly at third base. It looks like he's going to be the first guy to get most of the opportunities and starts at third base. He's been swinging the bat well. We'll see what he can do as an everyday starter. Yeah, Craig Council saying he deserves the chance. The Brewers picked him up off waivers from the Tigers. He's a young guy, just 24 years of age, and they're going to find out if he could possibly be an everyday third baseman. The other particulars in the trade, Ramirez to the Pirates. It's interesting, 12 years to the day that he was traded from Pittsburgh to the Cubs. Jonathan Barrios comes to the Brewers. He'll be assigned to double A. He's a hard-throwing, converted third baseman, now pitcher, and he can bring it. He's a wild card for the Brewers. And David Goforth is now in the bullpen for the Brewers, called up to replace Aramis Ramirez. So those are the transactions. We'll get reaction from the Brewers when we continue. Telly Hughes has more from the Brewers' dugout right after this.
you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. Fresh off a four and one homestand, the crew will kick off a seven game road trip in the comfortable confines of Chase Field here in Phoenix with four against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Good evening and welcome back inside Chase Field. I'm Telly Hughes. Trade rumors involving multiple brewers have been swirling for several weeks now and the first of what many speculate will be a few trades went down today. Aramis Ramirez was traded back to the Pittsburgh Pirates where he broke into the big leagues back in 1998. Here's a reaction from the brewers starting with manager Craig Council. You know he's been fun to watch play. He's he's a you know he's he's one of the better third basemen to play this game and you know, I'm happy for him that he's getting a shot. You know, and it's it's a it's for him. I think pretty good completion to his story to finish up where he's getting to finish up in Pittsburgh, where it all started for him. I'm surprised. Uh, that's a baseball. That's business. We know sometimes you play the here today. I know it's a great player. He had a lot of GM big league. So we 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 surprised a little bit, but I'm happy for him. Uh, we go to Pittsburgh and, and he have a good luck over there too. A lot of rumors last, you know, last month. Uh, you know, a lot of people need some third baseman. I mean, we're here now. We don't know what's gonna be the last thing, and, and for then, you know, people need it, and it's, it's all about. Coming up, the Brewers begin their road out west in the desert where Mike Fires will look to stay hot on the mound. B.A. and Rock are up next with the first pitch and call from Phoenix next on Fox Sports Wisconsin. on Fox Sports Wisconsin is presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Book your stay now. 102 degrees outside, but it's beautiful inside. They closed up the roof. They got the air condition blasting. And we are ready for baseball. It is a throwback Thursday here in Phoenix. They have the Craig Council uniforms on. Back in the early 2000s, Craig Council returning to Arizona. He spent parts of six seasons as a Diamondbacks player and as he said it's back when he was actually a good player <laughs> he was a great player for them in that one window in the World Series championship Potawatomi batting order for Craig Council Para leads off Luke Croy bats second then Ryan Braun middle of the order is Adam Lynn Carlos Gomez Scooter Jeanette 
And the bottom three for Council, Gene Segura, Hernan Perez, the new third baseman for now, and Mike Fires rounding it out. On the mound, a newcomer to the big leagues. A month ago, Rock, this guy, Zach Godley, was in single A, and here he is pitching for the Arizona Diamondbacks. What do you have on him? Yeah, that? his numbers are very good, combined between A ball and double A. Only three starts in double A. He's 6'3", 245 pounds. The Diamondbacks got him in the Miguel Montero trade with the Chicago Cubs. This is the first year that he has been a starting pitcher. He was a reliever with the Cubs, and now he's uh, getting a start. His Major League debut here with the Diamondbacks. And the former Diamondback, Gerardo Parra, will lead the way for the Brewers. And if you're just picking us up, you missed our open tonight. Telly Hughes had reaction from... The Brewers dugout, clubhouse, the Aramis Ramirez trade, one of two big trades in baseball today. As Para swings to the first pitch, fly ball to center field, and that's how the major league career of Zach Godley begins. One pitch and one out. Yeah, not a hard throw. He's going to throw a couple of different fastballs. Not afraid to come inside either. He'll two-seam the fastball, throws a lot of cut fastballs. And predominantly a two-pitch pitcher. We'll see how he's able to navigate through this very hot-hitting Brewers ball club. Guys have been swinging the bats pretty well. So here is Luke Croy now. Comes in batting 242. Three home runs, 20 driven in. Had one of his uh, more memorable home runs here in Arizona, which was a grand slam last year. The other trade in baseball today was Scott Casimir going from the Athletics to the Houston Astros. So a couple of interdivision trades today, the A's and the Astros, both a part of the American League West and the Brewers and the Pirates. You, you don't see that very often, but in the case of the Brewers and the Athletics, they are by all means sellers at this point. Not really thinking about a run for a postseason spot this year, but both teams would like to restart it next year quickly, and the Aramis Ramirez trade looks like a good one for both teams. We'll see how it all plays out, but the Brewers were able to clear some payroll rock, and they were able yeah. to get a, a wild card and a young, hard-throwing pitcher, a right-handed pitcher who has a fastball in the upper 90s. Yeah, he uh, hadn't been pitching all that long. He was an infielder in the minor leagues. He's only got 100 innings under his belt. And Barrios uh, expected to go to double-A Biloxi. We'll see what the Brewers are going to be able to get out of him. Godley's got Luke Croy in a 2-2 count. I'm sure that heart is pumping right now. This time last year, he was in the California League. He was a California League All-Star. That is single-A. Diamondbacks have a couple of pitchers, a couple of starters on the disabled list. And a pretty good looking breaking ball right there from Zach Godley. That's a cutter, slider, whatever you want to call it, but not overpowering. I mean, 92, 93, he's going to top out at. He works quickly, throws a lot of strikes, and doesn't mess around out there on the mound. Well, he's 25 years old for a guy that was in single A most of the season, three starts in double A. Not necessarily a youngster. Now that's an older single A player, a little bit older double A player, but now in a big league context, he's yeah. he's nice and young. Yeah. So <laughs> force him up to the big leagues. He got the, young quickly, didn't he? Yeah. Diamondbacks have Chase Anderson and Archie Bradley currently on the disabled list in their starting rotation. Anderson with a tricep injury, and Bradley is out with a shoulder injury. Two two to Lucroy in the air to right a lazy fly ball that Tomas cannot make the play on kind of drifting over there and Lucroy will live to see another pitch at the plate. Yeah, battling that uh, wall down along the grandstands in foul territory and see the ball guy get out of the way not a ball boy here in Arizona the ball guys they're up there in age. Well, he's able to get out of the way, but Tomas not able to make the catch. Last time we saw Tomas, he was playing third base. They've uh, finally been able to move him to the outfield, trading Trumbo away and 
This is uh, where the Diamondbacks would rather have Yasmani Tomas. So we'll do another 2 2 pitch, eighth pitch coming of the at bat. Luke Roy spoils another one. Arizona has lost eight of their last nine, and they are seven games under 500. That's the worst they have been this season as far as under 500 goes. Did a pretty good job not that long ago getting back to 500. And things have turned around for the Diamondbacks. I haven't been playing all that well. Hitting has been the issue. Lucroy fouls another one off. Wow, what a long at bat here for Jonathan Lucroy. So far, Godley hasn't shown anything off speed, everything hard. You know, the fastball, the cutter. Lucroy able to stay alive on pitches out of the zone. Two balls, two strikes, the tenth pitch of the at bat, and Luke Croy in the air to left center field. Long run for Pollock, and he'll run it down for the out. They had him shaded into right center, but the speedy Pollock able to make the play. And let's check the rest of the Diamondbacks defensively, courtesy of Menards. Yeah, one of the better defensive teams in the National League. They're third best in the NL when you talk about fewest errors, only 45 errors this year. They have been a very solid defensive unit. NCR take Pollock and Tomas in the outfield. Hill, uh, Med Pennington and Goldschmidt. Paul Goldschmidt, the triple crown contender this year. And you've got a very inexperienced catcher behind home plate, Oscar Hernandez. Brian Honora calling the balls and strikes. He's also the crew chief tonight. Two away for Ryan Braun. There's strike one. Braun enters the game tonight with 16 homers, 57 runs batted in. And Braun with an OPS at 817, combining the on base percentage and slugging percentage. A good year for Braun, an all star season. He was a fill in all star selection for the injured Matt Holiday and had a triple at the all star game in his only at bat. Brewers been able to stay relatively healthy is appearing in game number 91. This is the Brewers 96th game this year. Always good sign when Ryan's able to stay on the field. Braun did have the day off from the starting lineup yesterday afternoon. Brewers lost to the Indians 7 to 5 yesterday. Braun did have a pinch hit appearance and was 0 for 1. And a swing and a miss. How about that start? Zach Godley in his first inning in the big league sprinting back to the dugout after a three up three down inning. Deep right center field. Ender Inciarte ready to lead off for Arizona's Mike Fires gets his final warm ups in. Let's take a look at the Potawatomi batting order turned in by manager Chip Hale. You got Inciarte, Cliff Pennington, then Paul Goldschmidt. He's having a monster season this season. 
middle of the order is A.J. Pollock, Yasmani Tomas, and Aaron Hill. And then Nick Ahmed, Oscar Hernandez, Zach Godley rounding out the starting nine for the D-backs. And the numbers for Mike Fires, his win total is up to five. And the Brewers have done a lot of winning with Fires on the mound here recently. As yeah, a matter of fact, the Brewers have won his last five starts, 5-0 five and oh in Fires' last five starts. And they've won six of his last seven. He's won his last two decisions. So Fires has been throwing the baseball well, probably coming off his best outing of the year, a win against the Pirates. Seven innings, only three hits, and one run. So the Brewers trying to return the favor to the Diamondbacks. This will be a four-game series. Arizona took two out of three from the crew at Miller Park at the end of May. And, of course, that 17-inning marathon was the lone Brewers win. Martin Maldonado's walk-off home run in the 17th inning. Enciarte will start it. 289 batting average. Gets on base at a 316 clip in the leadoff spot here tonight. That ball's hit well. Right center field. Ryan Braun's got a long way to go, and he'll run it down for out number one. Well, let's check out the Menards Brewers defense tonight. You're going to see Hernan Perez in that lineup quite a bit, as long as he's able to get the job done. Continues to swing the bat. Six start at third base. This season, Craig Council has said that he feels as Perez best suited as a third baseman. And no other surprises as the Brewers line up defensively here tonight. Now, Perez was uh, in a bit of an understudy role with Aramis Ramirez. Ramirez, like he does with all the young players, especially the young Latin players in that mentor role. And Perez spent a lot of time with him. And while he is sad to see him be traded away. It's a great opportunity for Ramirez and a great opportunity for Hernan Perez. Think about where he is now compared to where his season began with the Detroit Tigers. Yeah, Fires things, pumps a couple of strikes in there on Cliff Pennington. Yeah, things continue to get better for Perez. Not only you know, coming over to Milwaukee, getting some playing time, but now he has an opportunity to win that job at third base for the rest of the season. I think Craig Council likes the fact he's putting a little the pressure on him. There's a swing and a miss. Pennington strikes out on a changeup. It's really been the difference maker for Fires in this terrific run. And two men out here in the first inning for Fires. Yeah, the four seam fastball still a little inconsistent with a big curveball, but he does have that changeup to fall back on. It's been his best pitch as of late, getting Pennington to chase one down in the strike zone. Well, this is the big bat in the Diamondbacks lineup, and the bat to avoid if the game is on the line. He has had a great year, and he has put up big numbers against Milwaukee this year. Making a run at a triple crown this season. That series in Milwaukee in late May. How about those numbers? Three homers, five RBIs. He walked four times. Just to a terror, and that ball's hammered way back in center field, and it is up and off the wall that is in play. And now Gomez throws one into the stands. No, bounces back in, yeah. fortunately. Otherwise, that's a run. Well, I'm not sure why Gomez making a throw like that. I mean, that was a double. It wasn't going to go any further. And Gomez, a wild throw. That'll be an error on Carlos in center, but... And you can't make that mistake, Paul Goldschmidt. Fastball down the middle, up in the zone, and baseball's got to go over that yellow line for a home run. And not sure why Gomez makes this throw. He can see that Goldschmidt was going to stay at second base. Brewers very fortunate that that ball stays in play. Fires not even dreaming that Gomez would make that throw. So a, an error on Carlos. Allows Goldschmidt to third with two outs. And here is A.J. Pollock now. Well, that ball was smoked. That's a home run in a lot of ballparks, but not here. It's got to not only go over that 407 sign, but got to go way up over that yellow line in center field. So he hit it 417 feet, but it's not enough for a home run. It is good enough for his 23rd double to go along with his 21 home runs.
Pollock up there with two away. A ball and a strike to A.J. Pollock and a swing and a foul. Goldschmidt wasn't at the plate long enough to uh, <laughs> give some of his season credentials, but you can find his name in most of the major offensive categories. He leads the National League in hitting. He is six off the pace and fifth in the league in homers, and he is tied for the league lead and runs batted in those triple crown categories. He's also second in the National League in on base percentage and third in slugging. Yeah. If you want to dive deeper into the metrics. One two pitch is just outside. Byers thought he had strike three. Yeah, so the bottom line, figure out ways to be able to pitch around Goldschmidt. Not only does he tear up everybody in baseball, particularly good against Milwaukee. He loves hitting at Miller Park, and this isn't a bad hitting ballpark either. Franchise player, Paul Goldschmidt. He's a third, 2 2 with two outs. Pollock swings and fouls it away. Don't see many center fielders hit cleanup. That's part of Chip Hale's search is to find some protection behind Goldschmidt. But uh, Pollock does have some pop. He's hit 11 homers this year. He's having a real nice year, hitting over 300. He's got 11 home runs. He's driven in 42. And a curveball, slow roller foul. Yeah, that's going to be an important pitch for Mike Fires as he continues the rest of the season. Get a little bit more consistent with that pitch. He has been pretty good throwing a first pitch for a strike. It hasn't been the put away pitch that it has been in the past. He's relied on the changeup for that as of late. Pollock, the major league hits leader among outfielders, coming into play tonight with 108 hits. Much like Carlos Gomez, he is a guy that now you feel comfortable hitting in the middle of the lineup. Diamondbacks for the season have been swinging it pretty well. Third in runs, third in batting average. Another 2 2 on the way. And a little cutter misses from Fires. Count goes full 3 and 2. Fires retired the first two. Booming double by Goldschmidt. Now the eighth pitch coming to A.J. Pollock. The Brewers win in order in the top of the first. 1 2 3. Payoff pitch. Pollock, little cue shot foul. Last year, Pollock hit 11 homers all season. It was a career high for him. Already has 11 this year. And for a team that doesn't hit many, Diamondbacks haven't hit a lot of home runs. They relied on getting the big hits. Which has not happened for him over this rough stretch for him. And Pollock on the ground, backhanded by Perez. Long throw is a good one. Heck of a play by Hernan Perez. Looking like he wants to keep that job at third base for a little while. Scoreless start for Mike Fires.
we head to the second inning. Yeah, the Brewers are coming up. Just had a nice little moment here as uh, Craig Council was. I don't know what do we call it this. Uh, just honored briefly. Right, it's a, just it's a recognized between innings recognition. Yeah. Columbia St. Mary's worth another look. He was one of those unsung heroes for the Diamondbacks in their World Series championship season. Was the MVP of the NLCS against the Atlanta Braves. He spent uh, parts of six seasons here and another homecoming of sorts for Council. Probably happen again when the team goes to Miami in September. Right. He's got a lot of interesting places that he's gone that have been uh, special for him. Mm -hmm. As Adam Lind with a cut of the miss to get the count started 0 2. Remember, he went to uh, Minnesota, managed against his, his idol, Paul Molitor. And of course, uh, coming here to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Done a nice job with the Brew Crew. Got the guys playing some pretty good baseball, swinging the bats. Telly Hughes is our reporter this road trip. Telly has more on Craig Council. What do you have, Telly? Well, as you guys mentioned, the Craig Council has several special places in terms of teams he has played for and cities he's a, he has been a part of. And he said here in Arizona was the one that really kind of gave him the curiosity of being a manager under Bob Melvin. That's who he played for when the Diamondbacks did win that World Series where Craig Council was a part of. He said Bob Melvin allowed him to come in meetings and kind of sit in and, and find out why he did certain things and why he made decisions that he made. So he credited Bob Melvin for really sparking that interest in becoming a manager. All right, Telly, thanks. Uh, by the way, Telly, they're going to have a, a moment of recognition for you as well as you return to Brewers baseball. Welcome back, buddy. Thank you. Good to be back. Will it be a moment of silence during it's a commercial gonna, break? It's going to be in the bottom of the 13th <laughs> inning. Gotcha. Well, we hope you're not silent Perfect. the rest of the trip, Telly. <laughs> <laughs> no, you already told me. I got some make it up to do. So. <laughs> right. Good to have you back. Good to be Telly's back, Telly's got the beard. He's all ripped and ready to roll. Yeah. I mean, he's been working out. Yeah, a lot of golf, I'm sure. Looks like a player now. Look at him. This is handsome as ever. <laughs> Telly Hughes, speaking of reporters, by the way, as Gomez takes one off the plate, uh, Sophia Minnard is celebrating a birthday right. today. So happy birthday to Sophia Minnard and happy birthday to, birthday to Jerry Augustine as yeah, well. How about that? Tomorrow is his birthday. As Gomez goes down the left field line, that's going to stay fair and go to the fence. And extra bases for Carlos Gomez. A one out double after the Lynn strikeout and the Brewers with their first hit against the rookie Godley. Hey, you wonder, uh, you know, if Godley is going to be able to come up with an off speed pitch at some time tonight because everything seems to be the same speed. There's that two seam fastball. He likes to work in, not afraid to go double up on the inside part of the plate, and he will make mistakes in there. And made one to Gomez, and he doubles down the line. Gomez yesterday was one for five struck out four times so he's glad to put the barrel on the baseball and a double his first trip tonight runner at second with one out for Scooter Jeanette. I think we were all curious to see how the lineup was going to be constructed tonight without Aramis Ramirez you do lose a big bat a big name. And uh, Council just slides everybody up, Jeanette and Segura specifically. So Gomez slots in that five spot, then Jeanette behind him, which is interesting because it does give Gomez a left handed batter behind him. Let's say he reaches as a, with a single or a walk as uh, Jeanette rolls that foul. And Council setting up an opportunity here with a very good base dealer in Gomez in the middle of the lineup. With Jeanette behind him, a left handed batter who is willing to take some pitches and get deep in account. So that might open up some stolen base opportunities for Carlos. And much more difficult for a catcher to not only see a base runner when he's taken off, but to get in position because that left handed batter is standing right in the throwing lane for the catcher. So it does create some issues for a catcher with a left hander up there trying to throw on base runners. Changes the dynamic when you go from a, a power guy like Ramirez. Who is a 
typically a first pitch swinger if he gets a strike to a hitter like Jeanette who gives you a little bit of the small ball effect and so it, it does work nicely if, to utilize Gomez's speed here tonight yeah. and see how effectively it, it uh, pays off for him. It's good balance in the top of the batting order with right handers and left handers making it a little bit more difficult as the game goes on for the opposing manager to get those matchups that he's looking for. Pickoff play and no throw as Gomez is back. Saw the speed differential from Godley. He did throw one off speed pitch, the 84. That way, a change up or maybe a curveball, but everything else has been in a range of about four miles an hour. There's the speed range for Godley. At 84, I think he's only thrown one of them. Ball and a strike on Jeanette. And he bounces one to Goldschmidt. That will advance Gomez, but an out, the second out. Scooter retired on a 3 1 put out. And they're testing Godley early. You know, he's obviously the Diamondbacks want to get him acclimated as soon as possible. Pick off plays and whatnot coming from the bench. He's covering first. And so far, so good. He's showing a lot of poise for a guy who was in single A right. a month ago. And he just started to uh, be a starting pitcher. He began as a starting pitcher this year. He was a relief pitcher. You could tell why. I mean, you could see that the pitches that he has, a lot of hard stuff, probably good one time through the lineup. We'll see what adjustments he's going to be able to make as this game goes on. He had the dirt, good block back there. So you have a lot of inexperience in the battery here for the Diamondbacks. You got Oscar Hernandez, a young kid up here. They say he's got pretty good tools behind the play, but really doesn't know the league all that well. And calling the game might be an issue, and that is certainly something that a guy making his major league debut should rely on. You can rely heavily on your catcher to call the game. Gene Segura with a runner at third and two away. Now half swing foul and out of play. Segura has gone along well. Gene had a hit yesterday, drove in a run yesterday. He's got that batting average on the rise. Segura comes in with an average of 282. And he drives that one foul. Just reached out and poked it to the right side. He's got the Hunter Pence pants going tonight. <laughs> yeah, he started doing that a couple of weeks ago. Pence is the only other guy that I've <laughs> ever seen do that. But he, over the knees, right? Yeah, the pant legs go up over the knees. Looks comfortable. Segura had a nice homestand. Eight hits, 20 at-bats. He hit his first home run in a long time. He's sitting on an eight-game hitting streak right now. It had been about six weeks between homers for Jeanette. A swing and a miss. Godley strikes out Segura with a runner at third. Two scoreless in his major league debut.
are coming to bat. And another moment of recognition for a former Diamondback, Gerardo Parra was recognized here between innings. By the way, it's now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag WISDATASTRONGFAN and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. It's all brought to you by T-Mobile. Chase Field, Phoenix, Arizona. Downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Diamondbacks are finishing up a long homestand. This is the third leg of this homestand. As fires starts Yasmani Tomas with a big curveball. Traffic not so bad this time of year, you notice? Why is that? Because uh, everybody evacuates? They try to avoid 110 degrees. Still bad, but not as bad. Well, oh, you've got a home here, Rock. Did you uh, did you run into any Arizona critters, animals, and critters? No scorpions, no snakes. Of course, I didn't go outside much. I sat at home and uh, listened to my air conditioning unit uh, work <laughs> for 24 straight hours. It never stops. One and two to Tomas. And he does not bite. Actually, it's not so bad in the morning. How early in the morning? Like before 5 a.m.? Well, you gotta, you got to get out there. you got to be done by 11, I think. You uh -huh. know? I mean, you don't have to be ridiculous about it. But <laughs> got to walk in today and headed indoors by around noon. The 2-2. Two -two, Tomas, big ball, deep right center field. And that one is gone. A home run. Well, this guy's got all kinds of power. Home run number six. Hits him out there with the big boys in deep right center field. And that's just a nice short stroke, too. He didn't overswing. Just dropped the head of the bat on it. Fires with the high fastball, and Tomas able to square it up. Look how easy this swing is. And the idea is uh, bat speed at the point of contact. Let it get to him and got on top of it, drove it out of here. And his first year in the big leagues came from Cuba. The Diamondbacks signed him to a six year contract prior to the season. And he has put the first tally on the board. Long home run to right center as Aaron Hill. Takes a ball down and away. Interesting that for Tomas, five of his six home runs have been solo home runs. Byers doesn't mind the solo homers. Did give up a solo home run his last time out. Yeah, those aren't going to hurt you too much. It's the ones where you give up there if you walk a couple of guys. And Byers really hasn't had much of a problem with the base on balls this year. He only had one start where he had a problem throwing strikes. That was a four walk game against the Atlanta Braves back on the eighth. He's a little bit frustrated right now. He's not getting the outside part of the plate. And Hill in the right field. That's playable for Braun. And there is out number one. It's always interesting to watch fires with the home plate umpire is the zone going to be expanded a little he is a control pitcher but he does get a lot of strikeouts and if he can get the hitter into swing mode he could utilize his array of pitches which is uh, significant that's what has been the separator for fires the fact that he can throw everything he's got for strikes yep. and particularly early in the count you got to have that outside corner so if he's not giving it to you you're forced to throw it a little bit more in the white of the plate and that's what hitters want the shortstop Nick Ahmed now and that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's a pitch that fires hopes to get every night needs to get it had the play but I guess Onora thought it was low. Luke Roy sets up out there again. Same spot this time fouled away by Ahmed. Fires went seven innings his last time out. Might have been one of his better performances of the year. He gave up just three hits. That was a win against the Pirates. First day back. You don't remember that game much, do you, Rock? That was your uh, wall of honor. I watched. 
Good evening. game. That one's in the air right center. Braun will ease over. And he's got this one for out number two. Well, I should say, I, I, I remember a lot of the first six innings. Let's put it that way. <laughs> You know, Fires had a pitch count that game of just 89 in seven innings. I think he could have easily continued, but just the way the game was going and his spot in the batting order was coming up. And you're coming off an all star break, your bullpen is fresh. And I think right. Council just felt like, all right, he's gotten us through seven. We can get through the last two. We have a very good bullpen going right now, and that's exactly what he did. And it was a 4 1 Brewers win. And Rock mentioned the Brewers have won the last five fire starts. And they've won six of the last seven fire starts as well. He has three wins in that stretch. He's just done a great job keeping the ball club in the game. He's really only had two bad outings all year. Gave up six earned runs in five innings and a loss against Kansas City. That was on June 17th. And gave up eight earned runs in four innings against Cincinnati way back in April. Oh, and two to Hernandez, a young catcher. He's probably been the most consistent guy. I mean, there have been some very good performances as of late from Jimmy Nelson and Taylor Youngman. But uh, if you look at it, I mean, from the beginning of the year to right now, I think Fires has been the most consistent guy they've had. Two outs and a one two count on the eighth place hitter. Always like to finish an inning off with the eighth batter that allows you to have the pitcher lead off in the following inning. There is Godley ready for his first at bat in the big leagues. This is only the seventh at bat in the big leagues for Oscar Hernandez. And down he goes. So Fires gives up a leadoff home run to Tomas. Comes right back, retires the next three in order with his second strikeout. Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. By Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. And by Hupie and Abraham, 800-800-5678. Hupie and Abraham, tell them you mean business. Diamondbacks are up one to nothing on a home run by Osmane Tomas. The rookie right fielder, Chase Field in Phoenix. Hernan Perez ready to start it off for the Brewers as we head to the third inning now. Perez fires and para. First three up. Diamondbacks lost here last night. They lost a series to the Marlins. 
And on their current homestand, they are just one and five. They got swept by the Giants. Matter of fact, they got swept by the Mets on the road and then came home and got swept by the Giants after the All Star break. Then dropped two out of three. Fernandez beat him yesterday. Perez swing it away at the first pitch. Fouls it off. And the Diamondbacks had some injuries. Got a four man bench, and question is maybe only two of them available. David Peralta got hit by a pitch in yesterday's game. He's questionable. Wellington Castillo has got a leg injury. Now that was scary yesterday. As Perez hammers one deep into the gap in left center. That's going to go to the wall, and Perez on his way to second with a double. Well, what a showing the day he gets the job at third. He's made a beautiful play at third already. And now double number eight. Coming in at uh, 329. He's been swinging about well. The key for him right here is going to be don't put pressure on yourself. Do what you've been doing. That's a nice short stroke and able to hammer that one out into the gap. He's worked very hard in getting that, that batting stroke grooved. So to speak, since getting a little bit more playing time, and he looks good up there. Now, Craig Council made no bones about it. Said his numbers here, the way he swung the bat, the reason why he's getting this opportunity, and the Brewers feel comfortable trading Aramis Ramirez. Gives Fires a chance to bunt him to third, and a roller, third base line. They're going to let it roll, and that's going to go as a hit. Well, that ball had some funky action on it. I don't blame Godley right off yeah. the bat. It looked like it was rolling foul. But the spin on it kept it fair, and that'll be an infield single for Fires. Well, times when the ball is on the dirt like that, it's going to roll to the line, but it didn't. It actually rolled further toward the grass. That'll be a base hit. Not only does he advance the base runner, but it's a single for Mike Fires. Makes the hitting coach smile, Darnell Coles. Did you see the pitch he bunted? I mean, he had to almost jump out of the way of it and, <laughs> and put it right down the third baseline. All right, so Fires is aboard. First and third, nobody out, top of the order in the red hot Gerardo Parra. Parra swung at the first pitch, his first time up. He flew out to center field. And he's hacking at this one. What a month Gerardo Parra has had. What a year he's had, but specifically the month of July has been huge for Gerardo Parra. So check out where he ranks single team, a single season team ranks. He is having one of the best months of July in franchise history. High batting average, high on base, big time slugging, and an OPS over 1,200. And doing it as a leadoff hitter. He's been leading off for a while now, and I think the Brewers have found a guy that they're pretty happy about at that leadoff spot in the batting order. Getting on base, he can run a little bit. He will uh, probably not play against a lot of left handers, give Chris Davis an opportunity, and then in that regard, Segura leads off. Now it's got to be. A little bit of redemption for Parra to return to Arizona as an everyday player now. Diamondbacks always had him. Uh, uh, that ball ripped foul. Even though he was winning gold gloves here and he won two of them. One in left, one in right as a Diamondback. He was always in that fourth outfielder, platoon outfielder mode. And that's what he was when he was traded from Arizona to Milwaukee last year. And that's what he was to begin this season. But as he started to hit, he started to play more under Ron Renneke. And then Chris Davis had the injury, the knee injury. And Parra is just soared as an everyday player. 0 oh, 2, little tapper to the mound to second for one. They come back to the plate, and Perez is out. That's going to be a double play. Yeah, that's good defense right there. That's a heck of a play by Ahmed at second base. And a good throw by. Godly, they get the force, fires out at second base, and Perez caught at home play. Check this out. This is a terrific throw by Nick Ahmed, the shortstop, and Perez an easy out at home plate. 
Well, we talked about their defense. They're one of the best in the league. And that play right there shows you why. Look at this throw. So you got to give a lot of credit to Zach Godley there. Very poised. He looked the runner back. That's really what bought him the out at the plate. He froze Perez when he looked at him. Perez couldn't take off right away, not knowing if he was going to make a play or not. He fired a strike to the bag at second. Uh, probably not a good idea to take off the home plate, not given where the Brewers are in the batting order. You got two and three coming up. Uh, you're not going to get a double play on that ball, not with power running down the line. So oh. a base running mistake. And now it's thrown away. Para started and stopped, not far enough from Goldsmith to advance on a low throw to first. Lucroy flew out to center field his first time up. They played Lucroy slightly to go to the opposite field in the outfield. <laughs> that one bounced all the way out to the mound. Para again started, then stopped. And yeah, Gerardo's having a tough time getting going. Yeah, the wild throw to first. Now that ball right there. Well, you hesitate, you stay where you're at. Well, Godley's come in as advertised as a strike thrower. Seven pitches this inning. Or rather, eight pitches this inning, seven strikes. And he's thrown 36 pitches in the game. And 30 of those have been for strikes. To Ahmed, the easy way, the second. And a promising start to the inning. Ends up with a zero on the board. One nothing, D backs. Nothing lead into the bottom half of this inning, and just like Rock alluded to last inning about Mike Fires, Craig Council said the same thing before today's game. He said he felt like Mike Fires has been the most consistent pitcher on the staff all season long. When I went to ask him about his last five starts, in which he's posted a 2 0 record with a 2.18 ERA, he said it's not just been the fi last five starts, he said, but his last start against Pittsburgh was one of his best ones because he was actually able to have more crispness to his pitches. He said he felt like the all star break did fires well and he came back and picked up right where he left off. But he said by far he's been the most consistent starter in the rotation. Now throwing strikes and uh, able to get that change up going Telly has been now five or six starts where that has been a very good pitch for him and he's still trying to get that consistency with the curveball. But as long as you have one of those all speed pitches working for you, you can get through a lineup. 
He threw seven shutout innings against the Reds on July 3rd, but he labored through that. It was a, a three hit effort for him in seven shutout innings, but he threw over 113 or exactly 113 pitches, and I think that's the difference in the start. So, yes, it does look like the Reds outing, which is seven innings and no runs on paper looks better than seven innings and one run but the way he went about carving up the Pirates efficiently giving up just that home run ball one and two the count to Godley in his first major league at bat and an about face strikeout number three for Mike Fire and there's the curveball we we're just talking about and yeah, get the uh, opposing pitcher Hey, no fee Friday is back tomorrow from 9 a.m. to midnight. The Brewers are picking up the cost of all ticket transaction fees, which means you can get tickets to any remaining Brewers home games this year without paying any ticket fees to purchase your non-fee tickets. Is at Brewers.com tomorrow. No fee Friday. I like it. No fees. Unlike when you try to rent a car in Phoenix, Arizona. A lot of fees. Yeah, don't be fooled by that $99 uh, per day <laughs> rate that they give you. <laughs> That's half of what you'll pay. <laughs> they got a lot of stadiums to pay for here. Surcharges and whatever. Yep. It's Arte trying to bunt his way on. A foul ball. Ball and a strike. Back to the top of the Arizona batting order. Diamondbacks go two for nine first time through. Fires three strikeouts, no walks. Gave up a double to Goldschmidt and a home run to Tomas. Enciarte flew out to right his first time up. And that one's hit well. Deep center field. Long run Gomez over his head. Enciarte into second base with a double. And a lot of that action out there in the right field and center field. Yeah, that's a big outfield out here at uh, Chase Field. That's 413 into the gaps out there in left center and right center. And Carlos Gomez can't catch up to it, and nobody can. A one out double for NCRD. A lot of room out there in center field. And you see how deep Gomez plays Gomez actually sustained one of the worst injuries of his career here in Arizona a few years ago had a separated shoulder diving for a ball that was in shallow center field he said the grass looks green it's beautiful out there but it is hard as a rock well. and you see a lot of balls when they hit the ground Shoot to the gaps and down the line. Well, the sun bakes the ground here like anywhere else. They keep this thing open until what about three o'clock? They close it up, cool it off. So the sun does beat down on it quite a bit during the day. Cliff Pennington with a runner at second and one away. Big swing and a miss. It's a good change up again by Fires. He's got good arm action on it. Three strikeouts thus far for Fires. Yesterday, the Diamondbacks, as an offense, struck out 16 times. Jose Fernandez of the Marlins struck out 11 in seven innings. Fernandez was on the mound. He hit David Peralta yesterday right in the ear, right in the ear flap. Yeah. So Rock was talking about a short bench anyway, and then uh, made even thinner with a couple of guys on that bench who are a little banged up right now, including Peralta. And Castillo has a bit of a hamstring problem. So it will be interesting as we get on into this game, especially with a guy making his major league debut on the mound. There's Peralta. He's up and. No concussion, but they're going to give him a day just to make sure. Got him. 
fires a strikeout on Pennington. Three in a row, three changeups in a row. Bell behind one and zero. Oh. Three consecutive changeups, and every one of them better than the one before. That's a relatively new pitch for Fires, at least new as far as comfort zone goes. He holds it like a split finger. It's a split change. And it was an out pitch, right? Now this is the way you want to face Paul Goldschmidt with first base open. Put him on. We're after the next guy. Fans don't like it, but they've seen a lot of it. Goldschmidt leads the league at walks. This will be his 74th walk of the season, and he's very. And 20 intentional walks. And 20 of the 27 issued to the Diamondbacks have come to Paul Goldschmidt. So that will leave it up to All Star AJ Pollock. Two on now. Two outs. Both now on strikeouts. No outfielder with more hits in all of baseball than Pollock. And with all players in the National League, Pollock is fourth in hits with 108. D. Gordon leads that category with 122. He's with the Marlins now. And then Goldschmidt, followed by Joe Panic, and then there is Pollock, fourth. Starts him with a hook for a strike. On the ground right to Segura. Nice and easy for him, and that's how the inning will end. Pollock hit it hard, but right at Segura. Braun Lynn Gomez coming up. As a major league manager, postseason hero for the D backs. Carstream.com trivia tonight. It was the pitcher that hit Craig Council during the ninth inning, game seven of the 2001 World Series. Yeah, he was on base for one of the great moments in Diamondbacks franchise history. The moment got him their first world championship. Bob Brindley, the manager. Of that club and uh, 
a mentor of sorts to Craig Council. Those two are very good friends. He loved Council as a player. As Braun on the first pitch down the right field line. That is a foul ball. Just missed. Almost an extra base hit for Ryan Braun. Sounded like he caught it down on the end of the bat a little bit. And he likes the baseball away from him, and he just does miss that right field line. An inch. Now it's not chalk anymore. It's it's paint. So you don't see the chalk fly. That used to be the indicator if it hit the line or not. Yeah, there's chalk in the infield, paint in the outfield. Braun broke his bat. Bat boys always have a second bat at the ready. That's part of the uh, the pace of play rules a few years back. Bat boys got to be on their game these days. Got to have that second bat available. The unsung heroes of ballpark cleanup. Bat boys, ball boys. That's not all they do either. After the game, before the game, they're in the clubhouse. There's the ball dudes <laughs> down there. They're not boys. <laughs> boys at heart. Yeah, bad boy's job is those are long days helping out the clubhouse staff, yeah. polishing shoes and organizing the clubhouse. And Laundry. All the other things that the players might ask him to do. Greatest job in the world for a teenager. Yeah. Kidding me? Takes extreme focus to be a bad boy. One two pitch and Braun fouls it away. Were you ever a bad boy? No. Never did that. Never so got one, asked. So one thing you haven't done. There's only one. You mean I found something you've never done? I feel like I, I could have maybe gone pro as a bat boy, just <laughs> with the skill set it requires. If you had a chance. <laughs> I never got the chance. I've been working with you nine years. I finally found something you didn't do. Yeah, Renaissance man you're working with, partner. I know. You've done a lot. Survival. That's what we call survival. You know, not all of us got to just go play professional baseball and got to go to a major college and had all your classes signed up for you, had people take those classes for you. <laughs> oh, that never happened. <laughs> that last part was cruel. No, I earned that uh, 1.7. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Braun is down on strikes. They will secure it at first. That GPA was all mine. <laughs> Second time Braun has struck out. That's a fourth K already for this rookie pitcher, Zach Godley. They broke out a curveball. Yeah, another breaking pitch that he was able to throw. He got Braun on strikes. It's going to bring up Adam Lynn. Diamondbacks put the shift on for Lynn. They keep their shortstop in place. And they move their third baseman, Aaron Hill, out toward the bag. And the second baseman Pennington is in the grass. So the shift is on for Lind, and he swings at the first pitch, fouls it away. Well, Adam Lind, 16 home runs on the season, hit one yesterday afternoon. Joins Ryan Braun at the top of the Powerball home run leaderboard. He can't quite get over that 300 mark. He's been close. He's around 290 at 292 tonight. Some kind of hitter, Adam Lind. That Lind, after a strikeout in the second inning at 292, but he's tied with Braun in homers. He is one RBI ahead of Braun. Been the most productive hitter this year. There's a swing and a miss. Wow. Godly coming back with another curveball. So a pitch we haven't seen much until this inning. And he's got back to back strikeouts with it. Yep. And he's got Lind and Braun both two times on strikes. Yeah, we wonder if he's going to make some adjustments. And he certainly has. Got the three, four hitters on strikes. Look at this guy. I mean, only eight pitches out of the strike zone. Well, the report was he pounds his zone. He works quickly. Doesn't mess around. Well, that's been the case tonight. 
And go figure his. Very brief stay less than a month in double A never had more than three strikeouts in a game. And he has five already and. We're only in the fourth inning in his first game in the big leagues. Did have an 11 strikeout game in a ball this year. This is a huge jump for him. That he's been a big winner this year in the minor leagues. Nine wins overall. And he's got Gomez in a swing and a miss. Godley was eight and three with a 2-2-7 ERA in single A. That was with Visalia in the California League, and then he had just three starts in Double A and was one and one, but an ERA over five. Gomez center field on the run. Pollock with plenty of room to make the play in a three-up, three-down inning with two strikeouts for Zach Godley. Money Tomas second inning homer. Fox Sports Wisconsin is giving away great prizes during every Brewers broadcast in July. Prizes include Brewers merchandise, Miller Park tours, autograph merchandise, and more. And here is tonight's Watch Him and Win Him sweepstakes image. Log on to FoxSportsWisconsin.com. Click on the Watch Him and Win Him banner on the homepage to enter. And if you're not a winner tonight, tune in again tomorrow for another chance. First to four against the Diamondbacks. And thanks for staying up late with us. They get started a little after 6.30 here in Arizona on Pacific Standard Time these days. I like that little half hour earlier start. Here's Tomas in the second inning. He hit a boomer. That wasn't even a strike. And he launched one over the fence in right center field. Home run number six. That was a leadoff home run in the second inning. A lot of power in that bat. Nice easy swing and just jumped out of here. Wow. Line drive into center field, a base hit. Did you see where that pitch was? Yeah. Well, the home run ball was off the outside corner. This one looked like it might have been off the inside corner. Yeah, Luke Roy setting up inside. One to strike. <laughs> They got it down in the handle but muscled it out into center field. That is the symbol of a bad ball hitter. A free swinging Tomas who's two for two. And a leadoff single here in the fourth inning that brings up Aaron Hill. Former Blue Jay he was teammates with. Adam Lind in Toronto 
And uh, those two, for a brief window there, put up some big home run numbers as members of the Blue Jays before Lind had the back problems and uh, cut his playing time. Aaron Hill in 2009 hit 36 home runs yeah. for Toronto. That was a stretch of time when he was with the Diamondbacks. The Brewers couldn't get him out. That's been the case as of late. Now the year Hill hit 36, he also drove in 108 runs. Adam Lind, who was the primary DH that year, hit 35 home runs. Drove in 114. Monster seasons. The Blue Jays thought they had a couple of uh, guys in their lineup, the one two punch that was going to be around for a long, long time. And then Lynn started having back problems. Hill came back, had a, a good year the next year, hit 26 home runs. Remember doing all of this as a uh, second baseman in Toronto. And then his numbers started to dwindle. Ultimately, the uh, Blue Jays deciding to part ways with Aaron Hill. 33 years of age now. Blue Jays traded him in August of 2011. That was the year the Diamondbacks met the Brewers in the NLDS. Three one pitch is outside and high ball four and the first walk of the game for fires non intentional walk I should say second walk overall and two men are on to start the fourth inning. So two on nobody out for Nick Ahmed. The fires in trouble here in the fourth. Does have the bottom of the order coming up. Ahmed takes a ball. One of the many rookies in the Diamondbacks batting order. And you can find Ahmed among league leaders. National League rookies. Top five in walks and runs. A slick fielder out there at short. 22 RBI, six homers. Low batting average, but he does pack a punch from time to time. His six home runs good enough for Eighth among National League rookies. Not a huge number, but you start to look up and down this Diamondbacks order. You see a lot of young players. They're going with youth. They're letting them play, creating an environment where they can perform and not have that feeling of looking over their shoulder. I think that's something that Craig Council has admired. Just talking to Craig before the game about Arizona and how they're going about it this year. They're going to let it ride with them. Yeah. And they've got guys who have come up here and they're not intimidated. And of course, they've got the big bat in the order and the guy that set such a great example for everyone, Paul Goldschmidt, who not only is a very productive player on the field, but an excellent leader, clubhouse presence. He works harder than any of them. When your big star works that hard, everybody else is going to do the same. No question as to who the leader is on this ball club. They all look to him. He doesn't disappoint. Talk to guys like Mike Harkey, who is sitting next to him there, and Mark Grace, who's associated with the ball club once again on the hitting side. These guys have been around a long time, and uh, they say that there's nobody like Paul Goldschmidt 
in the clubhouse with his work ethic. He's he's polite. He reminds me at least what you hear about Goldschmidt. It reminds me a lot of what you hear about Jonathan Lucor. Right. He's respectful. He does a lot of work in the community. Much like Luke Coy does. In there every day. That's, That's the right. most important part of being a leader. You know, being in that lineup just about every day. You get a day off once in a while, but whether you're feeling good or not, those guys have to play. Here's a one two and a swing and a miss. A fastball got by him. Ahmed strikes out. Then chase one out of the strike zone. The fires tried to climb the ladder on him and got him with the high fastball. Ball had a little movement on, a little bit cut to it, and I'm at down on strikes. So two, or rather one away with two on, and here is Oscar Hernandez. Struck out in the second inning to end the inning. Has struck out in five of his first eight plate appearances in the big leagues. Just his third game in the major leagues. Diamondbacks got him in the Rule 5 draft from the Tampa Bay Rays. Fires would certainly take a strike out here. He'd love a ground ball double play here as well. And a mighty swing and a miss down to a knee. He goes. There you go. Off his feet. We've seen that a few times in Milwaukee. A change up by fire. That's been a dandy of a pitch for him. First two reached. This could be the way out of the inning for fires right here, though, with the pitcher coming up next. Godley was the strikeout victim in his first major league at bat. Two balls and a strike on the young D back catcher. In there, strike two. I'd like to have that one back. Must have been looking something else, right? Fastball down the middle. Chase the curveball on the 2 2. Good block there by Lucroy. Keeps a double play opportunity alive. That one was out there a little bit too into the left handed hitter's batter's box. And the extremely agile Jonathan Lucroy. It moves around. I mean, he can go side to side as far as anybody in the game. You kind of get used to it. You take it for granted once in a while the pitches that he's able to block. He's got a lot of. Quick twitch power in those legs. Full count, one away. And fires inside move, throw to second, just back is Tomas. That was the right idea. If he throws it right away, he might have a shot, but Jeanette was a touch late covering. Thinking that uh, the Diamondbacks might be running on a 3 2 count. I doubt it. Now you got a young hitter at the plate, 22 year old Oscar Hernandez. Just arriving to the big leagues. Fires got to make a pitch here. Two on, one out. And a shot into center field, a base hit. So coming in to score is Tomas. And Hernandez with an RBI single. Makes it 2 nothing Arizona, and that's one Fires would like to have back. Yeah, not a good pitch right down the middle. It's one thing to be down the middle, but you got to get it up in the zone. That one about mid-thigh high, and Hernandez hits it hard into center field. 
Tomas scores easily just the second career hit for Oscar Hernandez and really the whole sequence the whole at bat for fires trying to pick a little and got himself in a 3 2 count. Now Godley trying to bunt the runners over with one away. And you wonder where that changeup was. I mean, uh, Hernandez looked so bad on that pitch. Took a fastball down the middle. Maybe thinking, I guess Luke Croy and Fires thinking if he took that fastball down the middle, maybe looking for that changeup. He might be looking for it on three and two. Sometimes you can outthink yourself. Because even when a hitter's looking for that changeup, you take K Rod, for example, when he puts it where he wants it, they're still not going to hit it. Godley squares early and he bunts right through it. And it's 0 and 2. Now the Brewers are thinking if Godley does bunt the ball and he bunts it firmly at someone, Perez or Fires or Lind all coming in on him, might have a chance to turn two. He does not look very comfortable trying to get a bunt down. At least the first two offerings. And a square again and he bunts out one foul out of self defense and that'll be a strikeout. For fires. So Mike now it's six K's. <laughs> he didn't realize he was out. <laughs> so what do you mean it's a foul ball. He still doesn't think he's out. <laughs> okay, sit down now. <laughs> he turned around and went back to the plate. Yeah, it's his big league debut. I'm sure he's got a lot on his mind. Well, right? they, what do you have? Three games in double A when they start to hit, right? That's true. Had three at bats in double A. So that's his fifth career at bat of his professional life. Top of the order now. Two outs. Here is Ender Inciarte. Well, you would think that a pitcher would know if a guy bunts with two strikes and fouls it off, he's out. He had to have just forgotten the count. You think? It was funny. He started going back to the dugout, and then he <laughs> he turned and looked at Andy Green, the third base coach, who was actually communicating with Inciarte, and he goes, "Oh, you talking to me? I'll just all right. I'll go back then." Oh, I'm not out. In the center field, a base hit. And this is going to bring in another run to throw going to third base. It's off line now gets away from Perez. They're going to send the run in as the ball gets into the camera well. And so does Enciarte. He scores, doesn't he? That's going to be a two no, base error. He, third. he wasn't at second base when that ball went in. Right. And just an awful defensive showing here. Well, Gomez is making two throws. I think if this throws on the money. And he's going to get an out, but Perez uh, forgot about catching the baseball. Had NCRT been at second base when that ball went in the dugout, he would have scored. I thought initially that the third base umpire, Mark Ripperger, was telling NCRT to score, but it was actually Hernandez that he told, was told telling to score. Now this is an inning that should not have been for Mike Fires. At the bottom of the order, even though the first two reads had a chance to get out of it, that at bat sequence to Hernandez really got him in a spot. Now three runs are in, four nothing Arizona, and here's Cliff Pennington with a runner at third. Is that a Gomez error or is that Perez? What do you think? That was offline, but it's one that Perez should have at least been able to keep in front of him. It's going to be an E8. I'm with you though. Perez has got to make that play. Well, he's not going to get the out, but he should be able to catch it. Pennington has struck out twice, but he's up there with a runner at third.
Gomez has two errors tonight. This one leading to a run. One two to Pennington. And he got him. Fastball struck him out. To end the inning. Seven strikeouts for Fires. He actually struck out the side. But Arizona scores three runs and they lead it for nothing. Time to check in with the crew in the community. If you are a biking enthusiast, you will love joining Brewers Community Foundation for the inaugural benefit bike ride scheduled for August 8, 2015. The ride includes four routes, 22 and 44 mile routes starting and ending at Miller Park and the BA and Brock division, the 88 and 100 mile routes from Madison to Miller Park. Pedal to benefit four nonprofit organizations in town, Urban Ecology Center, Dream Bikes, Penfield Children's Center, and the Miracle League of Milwaukee. Spend a fun day in the saddle, followed by a tailgate party and ticket to that night's Brewers Cardinals game, guys. All right, Telly, thanks. Here we go to the fifth inning, and the Brewers have some work to do against a guy who is making his Major League debut and is handling himself very well right now. Zach Godley has five strikeouts. He's retired five in a row. Has allowed three Brewers hits. Facing Scooter Jeanette to start this fifth inning. And Scooter will stay in an 0 2 count. He's starting to mix it up a little bit, throwing some curveballs. Keeping the Brewers a little bit more off balance. Been able to handle the middle part of the Brewers order pretty well. Remember, this is an offense from Milwaukee that has been in high gear for a while now. And Jeanette to the opposite field. A base hit. Snaps the string of five in a row. Hit number four. And let's see if the Brewers, the second time through the order, can start to dial in a little bit. Gene Segura with Scooter at first base. And yeah, that was a case right there where, you know, Guiley throwing a few too many strikes. It was a, an 0 2 count. He just kept pounding the strike zone, and Jeanette got one to hit. First ball swinging is Segura, who struck out with the runner at. To third base in the second inning. Brewers left a man on last inning. That uh, third inning with the Brewers having two on to start the inning, including the pitcher fires. And then you had the top of the order coming up and a base running mistake ended up as a double play. And then 
Lucroy bounced out to end the inning. Golden opportunity there, and then the Diamondbacks score three runs in the bottom of the fourth. And an inning, I'm sure Mike Fires would tell you should not have been. Yeah, three-two pitch to the uh, the catcher Hernandez with a base hit, and then things unraveled from there. Two errors from Carlos Gomez tonight, and one leading to a run. One-one pitch he is way inside. Segura had 38 consecutive singles, so his had a string of 38 hits that were all singles until his home run against the Pirates this past weekend. There's a shot right to second, and it goes 4-6-3 in a double play. That was well done by Cliff Pennington. And that ball was hit hard, but Pennington had to go up the middle, make a nice catch, and an easy flip over to Ahmed. His about as easy a double play as you're going to see uh, getting to speedy Gene Segura. Good job by Pennington to keep his feet well balanced when he caught it. So two men are out. And the impressive showing by Zach Godley continues. Hernan Perez with two away bases. Clear and there's a strike buckled his knees. Aaron Perez started this game with. The wrong jersey on. He had a he had the blue top, but it had the Brewers logo, the home blue top jersey. He has gotten his proper jersey. On. They look alike. Road jersey says Milwaukee, home jersey says Brewers. That's the only difference. Understandable mistake. Hey, you're all excited. You're going to get an opportunity to make some starts and pull out the wrong jersey out of the bag. Of course, he will tell you I had the other jersey on and got a double. Let's see what he does here. You might go sneak it back on, you're saying. Maybe put it underneath. Now, will that result in a fine for Perez or a or a letter from Major League Baseball? I think he gave his jersey away. That's the one he was wearing. <laughs> no, I'm sure that guy has his own. One two to Perez. Stays alive. Are you asking me if that's going to be a fine or was that rhetorical? I mean I'm just curious to know what I the don't know. Uh, I don't, I doubt ramifications it. are wearing the wrong jersey other than the, than the embarrassment. I don't know. Honest mistake. Got him. Zach Godley. Sprints off the mound. He's got an impressive debut going. Working on a shutout B5.
In the bottom of the fifth inning, four nothing Diamondbacks. And tonight's time of the game winner, elbow room in Eau Claire. If they call the Brewers, Brewers in the next 24 hours, they get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game this year. They're suffer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin. And Miller Lite, not a better picture you could have for the Tavern <laughs> of the game. All lined up on the dugout. Fire starts his fifth inning. He's down 4 nothing. Paul Goldsmith leads off. He has doubled and he has been intentionally walked. The league's leading hitter at 345. Goldsmith now a two time All Star. And he will swing 3 0. Goldsmith was selected by the fans this year as the All Star starter. He and Bryce Harper are the two guys on watch right now. I'd say front runners, the MVP watch. I guess again, it all comes back to can your MVP come from a team under 500? Diamondbacks are seven under. He has to be head and shoulders above everybody else if that's going to happen. Swing and a miss. Fire strikes him out. Got him with a fastball. Came all the way back down three and zero oh and able to get one of the league's best hitters. Just watch this fastball up in the zone. Remember the one to Hernandez that he hit into center field for a two out RBI. It was down in the strike zone around the knees and. Fire is able to elevate it for strikeout number eight. Fires his high mark for the season 12 had 12 K's against the Cubs back in May. But the most strikeouts Fires has had in six weeks. There's a liner in the left center base hit. And look at that ball jump into the gap gets by Para. And the speedy AJ Pollock is on his way to third. Stand up triple. We talked about the short grass and how fast the outfield plays when the ball hits it and that one just jumped into the gap and to the wall on a ball that uh, Segura didn't uh, miss by much. I mean that ball is a bullet. Actually uh, Gerardo Parr overran it just a little bit went between he and his glove and at that point you knew the pop was going to be in for an easy triple. Brewers have not been. Very tight defensively tonight. A couple of errors by Gomez, one leading to a run. And now the Diamondbacks with a runner at third and one out for Yasmani Tomas, who's two for two against Fires. Homered in the second and then led off the fourth inning, last inning with a single. Tomas had a homer on an up and away fastball that was a ball and a single on a down and in changeup that was a ball. And he chases one upstairs down the middle. Sometimes you just got to throw strikes and maybe get him out right. And he only hits <laughs> the pitches out of the strikes. Yeah. It's right. Like Vladimir Guerrero. Start right down the middle and that's usually his. His hole in his swing. That was kind of the uh, the pitchers meeting with George Brett guys like that. You spent about two seconds on those guys say so just hope he hits it at somebody <laughs> and he chased one upstairs fires strikes him out number nine for Mike fires here in the fifth inning well, free swinger this time fires able to get him on a pitch literally head high didn't mean to but that was a full swing for a big. Strikeout. So Mike Fires has struck out his last five outs. And seven of the last eight out, make it eight of the last nine outs have been strikeouts. 
as he drops a curve in there on Aaron Hill. Be curious to know if there was a conversation in the dugout between innings. Fires has come out with a little more purpose here in this fifth. I, I know that fourth inning burned him up. You could just see it in his face. He looked up and there's three runs on the board and he, well, he was uh, gave up that three two single at Hernandez with the pitcher on deck. He could have easily gotten out of that mess. With no runs crossing home plate, but ended up with a three spot. Sometimes you just have to scratch your head. Strike on the corner. One and two on Hill. Three of the four runs are earned against Fires. He's given up seven hits. Couple of walks, one of those an intentional pass to Goldschmidt, but nine punch outs, and he's trying to strike out the side for the second consecutive inning. One, two on the way. Hill didn't bite. Diamondbacks are in bonus innings with their starter tonight, Zach Godley. It wasn't even on their major league roster to start the year. He's got five shutout on the board. And pitch count in very good shape. Change up base hit. RBI. Two out two strike RBI single for Aaron Hill. And the first bad change up that fires has thrown tonight. Yeah, lift that one up. That was a 2 2 pitch change up up out over the plate. And get that one down. That ball is starting to leak back over to the heart of the plate. You get that down, it's going to be an out pretty pretty close. But Aaron Hill able to bang it into left field. Keeps the inning going for Nick Ahmed. Back to back innings with two out run producing hits for the Diamondbacks. Those are backbreakers. Five runs are in on eight hits. And both innings, the fourth and the fifth, fires a strike away from getting out of the mess with nothing across. Looks like Knable's starting to loosen up. Fires' spot in the batting order is due to lead off next inning. Well, some nights you go out there and you don't have your best stuff and you you get through it and you don't give up any runs or you keep your runs to a minimum. I would say fires has very good stuff. Tonight. Yeah I would agree. I was getting ready to say I mean sometimes you have good stuff and you know bad things happen you give up five runs. It's the way the game is sometimes you come in here the Diamondbacks have not been swinging the bats well particularly with runners in scoring position that hadn't been the case tonight. And then the Brewers come in here as one of the hotter offensive teams in the league, and they're getting shut out. The way it goes. They'll still have some time. Let's see if they can get it turned around. Fires trying to get them into the dugout again. One ball, two strikes on Ahmed. Diamondbacks are three for ten with runners in scoring position. Been a problem. For them, they are striking out a lot, but they have a lot of young players, and to be expected. I think Arizona, if you go back, just the series before the All Star break, felt very good about what was happening here. They had a little mojo going. But then they got swept by the Mets in New York. That started a bit of a slide for the Diamondbacks. And, you know, with a young team, you're always hoping they pull out of it. But sometimes you get wrapped up in the axle and it's, it's tough to get loose. They got swept in New York after they swept a two game series from the Rangers, who at the time 
We're playing very good baseball. And you get into good stretches, you get into bad stretches. You just hope that the bad stretches aren't too long. The Brewers are very well aware of that this year, the way their season's gone. And you look at the Diamondbacks roster, there aren't a, a lot of guys that you'd feel like they'd be trading away. They have their veteran players, but for the most part, it's a bunch of young organizational guys or guys that they've acquired over the last couple of years via trade that they're going to stick with and that are part of their future. Pitch number 100 for Fires here in the fifth inning. Two and two. Another good block by Luke Roy. This one after another. I love the effort that he puts out every night. He's only walked two, one of them intentional, but he's been all over the place with some of his stuff tonight. Hasn't thrown one in the strike zone yet, but has a 2 2 count to the batter, Ahmed. See if he can get him to chase. 2 2 is a curveball called. Strike three. Might have got the benefit of a call there, but he strikes out the side. Ten punch outs, probably his last hitter. Fires his night is over just a weird night for fires 10 strikeouts in five innings, but he gives up five runs for earned carsu.com trivia who was the pitcher the correct council or a hit correct council ninth inning game 7 one World Series that would be Mariano Rivera and it led to the heroics of Luis Gonzalez drove in Jay Bell he was now a coach with the Reds. Peterson will start it. Brewers down five nothing against a rookie pitcher making his major league debut tonight. Zach Godley has six K's. Only 64 pitches through the first five innings for Godley. To a change up there got a strike. Godley played his college ball at Tennessee, so he comes from a highly rated program. Right off the end of the bat, Ahmed will field it and throw out Peterson for out number one. Hey, on August 2nd, the Brewers are Cup square off in a Sunday afternoon 
showdown at Miller Park and all fans in attendance will get a Matt Garza Garden Gnome courtesy of Associated Bank to reserve your spot go to Brewers.com today. Count Garza Gnome. <laughs> Those are a big hit. August 2nd. We're coming up on the eighth month of the year. Hard to believe. Yeah. Trade deadline July 31st. Got a week to go. A lot of home games for the Brewers in the month of August. Yeah, it's going to be some fun. Wonder how long Gerardo Parra is going to be in a Brewers uniform. There are a lot of teams scouting him tonight. And they've been on him for a little while. I think everybody's curious to see if he can keep it up. But then you look at the numbers, he's been doing this since late April. He's kept it up. And just a good player, having a good year. Getting an opportunity to play every day, probably for the first time in a while, and showing what he can do. Parra in an 0 2 count. He's seen nothing but strikes tonight. That's the first ball that he has seen from Godley. Zachary Godley. Drafted in 2013 in the big leagues in 2015. To the Diamondbacks by way of the Cubs. Miguel Montero trade. First year this year, he was a starting pitcher in, the, in Pro Bowl. Amazing, isn't it? He's a starting pitcher in college. A reliever with the Cubs in the minor leagues, and here he is making a start. Got a five to nothing lead. That was a December trade. Two pitchers for Montero. Godfrey came over with Jefferson Mejia, or Godley, I should say. Another minor league pitcher. But he was a starter at Tennessee. He pitched at a great program there in the SEC. High level collegiate program. And he looks like a guy that has a lot of poise on the big stage. He's got a four hit shutout going. Ouch, that hit him? Yep. And wondering if that was a swing. It was not. Para. Drilled by a pitch. Yeah, that got him right on the bone, right on the leg. That's going to hurt. He's able to check his swing, which makes it a hit by pitch. It was close, though. If you swing first, then the swing counts. Athletic trainer Dan Wright is out to check on Para. Yeah, on a knee. Yeah, pretty close whether he went or not. Well, he might have gone on that swing. Uh, I'm with you. Only got a bad break being hit by the pitch. A good break, the fact that he's not out. That is not a reviewable play, by the way. Yeah, I got him right on the knee, and uh, that. that He's going to have a difficult time. I mean, he's going to get some ice on that thing. Wonder if he's going to be able to continue tonight. Thought it got him on the shin, but it was right off the kneecap. And he's having a hard time bending it. So the examination is over, but Para still cannot put any weight on it at all. I know in par he's going to try and stay in the game, shake it off, maybe loosen it up a little bit, get out of first base. It's about as good as it's going to feel the rest of the night. <laughs> it's going to start stiffening it up. I'd be surprised if he continues. Yeah, well, he's he's looking like he wants to, but he's having to prove to Dan Wright he can. At least walk to first base. And once again, other things they'll stiffen up. I mean, it's gonna it feels bad now. It's probably gonna feel worse in about 20 minutes. 
ask him to run a little bit. All right, he's going to stay. So he'll give it a go, but he'll be someone to watch here in the next inning or two to see if he can stay in there. You're right. Feels about as good as it's going to feel right now. Let's see. It starts to swell a little bit. Yeah. So it is a base runner with one out. Here is Lucroy. Brewers get into the heart of their order. AT&T Uverse Rewind. How about we take you back? Ryan Braun hit by a pitch. Marshall got ejected. Kurt Gibson so happy about it. Good job, kid. He brings in Brad Ziegler and how did he lose the game? Grand slam by Jonathan Lucroy. That was one of those moments last year. Yeah, that was that was in the heat of a pennant race as well last yeah. season for the Brewers. It's amazing, you know, your guy gets hit like that, gets thrown at, he, get, he hits Braun, gets thrown at, and imagine his fist pumping him up in the uh, the stairs of the dugout. You don't see that very often. That just blatant. That Luke Roy made him pay. The best way to make him pay, right? The best retaliation. Gibson was let go. Chip Hale in his first year as skipper. Lucroy flies to right. Tomas calling early, and he's got it for out number two. Kurt Gibson, after he was uh, let go by the Diamondbacks, he actually went back to Detroit, and he was supposed to be part of their broadcasting team this year. Early in the season, he revealed that he had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And, uh, early. Onset of Parkinson's for a former MVP and a great player, Kurt Gibson. And he took himself off the air and really hasn't done any television work. And I hope he's going to be all right. I guess uh, that thing's uh, tough to handle. You hope the best for him. So here's Braun with two away and a strike to get him started. Godley's making all of his pitches tonight. He's been impressive. Yeah. I'll tell you, when Kirk Gibson was in his heyday with the Tigers, there was nobody better. Power, speed, throwing arm. I mean, he could do it all. A junkyard dog, yeah. Kirk Gibson. Great wide receiver at Michigan State. Very fast. Oh, and two to Braun. 1988 MVP, Kirk Gibson. Had that dramatic home run. One of the most dramatic home runs in postseason history that home run against Dennis Eckersley came one of the World Series in 88 can barely walk no balls two strikes interesting story about that home run by Gibson he said the reason he wanted to hit because he was getting agitated because Vin Scully and Joe Garagiola were on the air at the time and basically saying he was not available. He was not going to play. wasn't an option. He goes, I'll show him. You find your motivation anywhere, even if it's the broadcasters who inspire you to come out. Braun down the right field line. That's hit well. Tomas will watch it go foul. So broadcasters do have an influence on the game. Is that what you're saying? Some of them do. All these years you've been telling me that's not the case. In this case, when Ben Scully's at the mic, yes. We had one of the great calls, and you know, Jack Buck was on the radio for that World Series. And that was one of his most famous calls. Right. I can't believe what I just saw. Go, 
Braun hangs tough. Just got a piece. It was also a great scouting report that day. So anytime Eckersley got into a 3 2 count to a right handed batter, he tried to throw a back door breaking ball. That was a scouting report. Mel Didier gave that scouting report to the Dodgers. Joey Amalfitano, the third base coach, told Gibson and the rest of the team back door breaking ball. And as that ball gets away from Hernandez and Para trying to shake off that hit by pitch to second base. Yeah, risky business uh, going up there in that situation for Gibson and looking off speed. He got it. What right. a bad pitch either. Right. Back yeah, door breaking down. ball. And he just went down and uh, knocked it out of there. And as he's rounding third base, he's yelling to Joey Amalfitano. Back door breaking ball, Joe. Back door breaking ball. Scouting pays off. That was a big story in 88 that you'd be that advanced in your scouting report. And Braun is really hanging tough. I'll tell you, Godley's making some good pitches on him, too. Off speed pitches. He's starting to break out all of his pitches now. Last couple of innings, he's broken out the change up, the curveball. And why not? I mean, if. The way he's pitched isn't going to give you a lot of confidence. What will? Pitch number eight to number eight, who has struck out twice. Brewers trying to get one on the board here. And Godley will bring his young catcher out. Get a 25 year old pitcher making his major league debut, a 22 year old catcher in just his third career start in the major leagues. And they seem to be going pretty well together. I mean, it hasn't been a whole lot of meetings on the mound. Haven't seen a lot of shakeoffs, and of course, early in the game it was basically two pitches, fastball, cutter. He's been a little bit more willing to use the off-speed pitches last few innings. So they settle on the game plan against Braun. Two and two with two outs. Para, who was hit by a pitch at second base. A wild pitch got him there. And Braun cash one in with two away. He fouls another one off. Ball, Goldschmidt giving chase, and he runs out of room. Yeah, that's one that uh, when Braun's swinging the bat well, he's going to hit out of the ballpark. That was a hanger right down the middle. Ryan just a little bit behind it and fouled it off. We'll see at least ten pitches. Looking for a mistake. Two two and Braun fouls another one off. A little bit behind on everything. That was a cutter that was down the middle. Ryan stepping out of the box talking to himself saying how are you missing these pitches. This is his uh, third at bat of the night, Rock. He's seen 21 pitches in his three at bats. He says he's looking for mistakes. He's had mistakes his last two pitches and fouled them both off. It's a battle. Pitch number 11. Godly checks on Para, and Braun fouls another one off. Right into the Diamondbacks. Television booth and a former big league catcher unable to catch it, not willing to catch it. He's too smart for that. Correct, not unable, unwilling. 
<laughs> One of the great guys of all time right there, yeah. Bob Brindley. A heck, of an, a heck of an announcer, too. Pitch number 12. And he strikes him out. The ball gets away. Braun on his way to first. And the throw in time to secure the K. That was something. I tell you, Zach Godley, I don't know what the rest of his career is going to be like, but his debut is something special. is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. And by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. It is five to nothing, Arizona. Bottom of the six, Diamondbacks coming up. And as everybody's talking about on Twitter, you can join the Bucks for the Own the Future open house tomorrow and add your name to the roster of new members of the Bucks organization. Check out the best seats available for next season. Lock in the best prices available and own the future with the Bucks. Visit FoxSportsWisconsin.com slash events. Doorman here tonight. Oh, is that right? See the doorman? I was uh, no reading a promo. Is, is that the doorman? Yes, yeah, the doorman. And Corey Knable's, uh, you know, here in the sixth inning, last pitched on Tuesday against the Indians in a Perfect ninth inning, including a couple of strikeouts. He pitched on Tuesday, but had not pitched before that since July 6th. So it was a big layoff. A good job by Knable finishing up that victory on Tuesday night. So Mike fires five innings tonight. Very unusual line for fires in that he strikes out 10 in five innings. Including striking out the side the last two innings, and let's see. He had six, seven, eight, nine of his last ten outs were via the strikeout. Yeah. And yet he gives up five runs. Four of them earned. And I'll ask if he went, he did. And Hernandez is strikeout victim number 11 for the Diamondbacks. A bunch of strikeouts, but in between, the Diamondbacks have been able to put up some runs. Good curveball from Canadian. We saw that pitch on Tuesday. Had a long layoff before getting into the game on Tuesday and looked pretty good. Jake Lamb will pinch hit. That's going to be the end of the night for Zach Godley. What a debut he has. He'll never forget this night. He'd never forget it anyway, but the fact he goes six shutout innings. Ultra bonus for the Diamondbacks. He's going to get a good night's sleep tonight. I bet he was pretty wound up last night trying to get some rest. Lamb typically the Diamondbacks third baseman. Getting a pinch hit appearance 
in this one. Jake Lamb. Takes a strike. One and two. Canabo getting ahead. Corey's done a good job whenever he's gotten the chance. And he strikes out Lamb. Punched him out on four pitches. Back to back K's for Corey Knabel. Two yeah. outs in the sixth. That mid 90s fastball, outer half of the plate. Able to get him. Top of the order here is Inciarte. Last two innings, the Diamondbacks have been uh, at least the three outs in the innings have been strikeouts. They scored three runs in the fourth around those three strikeouts and added one, the RBI by Aaron Hill in the fifth inning. Fires is the second Brewer ever with ten or more strikeouts while allowing five or more runs in fewer than six innings. Zach Grinke, June of 2011 at Wrigley Field. I remember that game. Struck out 10 and 5 and a third, but gave up eight earned runs. It's a pretty good memory you got there. Yeah, I remember it well. There's a strike. One and two to count. Been sitting on that one for a while until just the right moment came up. It's amazing. <laughs> One two pitch got him Corey Knabel strikes out the side. Oh, got K rod in the bullpen and a K Nabel in the bullpen. Three up three down three K's all swinging. Brewers down five nothing. Let's see if they got a comeback in them tonight in Phoenix. Top. Top of the seventh inning we go. I don't know. Hot tubs don't seem so good in Phoenix, Arizona, in July. As promised earlier in the game, we have selected the Data Strong Fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag WiskDataStrongFan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast. And it's brought to you by T Mobile. That's a great picture. It's all decked out in the sausage run. Andrew Chafin is the next pitcher for Arizona. They got a great start out of Zach Godley in his major league debut. And he's been outstanding uh, in 22 outings since the beginning of May, or I should say the middle part of May. He's 4-0 with a 153 earned run average. Overall, 190 ERA, and he's only allowed the one home run. 5-0 and in 38 games. 
Adam Lind will lead off. Then Gomez, then Jeanette. A couple of lefties coming up in this inning for the Brew Crew. Lynn tonight 0 for 2, a couple of strikeouts. Zach Godley faces Braun and Lynn five times, all strikeouts. The two top home run hitters for the Brewers on the home run leaderboard. Nothing but K's tonight. They got Ryan a couple of times on a curveball. Curveball turned out to be a pretty good pitch for him. Some curveball, some change ups tonight. Got strikes with just about all of those off speed pitches. On throwback Thursday night here in Phoenix, they've got the old unis on. Two and two to Lind. Lefty on lefty matchup. Lynn's done a good job against lefties this year. He's kept him in there as an everyday player. He's having a great year. Right off the end of the bat with that shift on, there's a lot of room over there, and Lynn trying to punch one into left field. He broke his bat. That was a mistake by Chafer. and left that fastball up. Gave Lynn an opportunity to hit it hard. Fastball slider for Chafin. He can rest it up there as high as 94 miles an hour. He's got a pretty good breaking pitch. That's his out pitch, the slider. Two and two, the count. And he lays off. Full count to Lynn. You don't see many teams. Completely changed the color pattern of the organization from uh, the purple and teal to as, uh, the red and black. They changed that color in 07 and they won the division that year. So you knew it was going to stay. On the ground, the only infielder over there is Ahmed. Right to him. Out number one. Didn't even hardly move, right? That's how good that defense is for the Diamondbacks. Three division titles with the purple and teal, and then they've won two with these colors and their World Series championship in 2001. Interesting organization, the Diamondbacks. As you see, Gomez at the plate tonight, courtesy of Wendy's. Not often you see a former manager for a club come back as a broadcaster. Right, they run him out of town after he wins a World Series. Right. And then he returns as the ever popular TV analyst. Now, Larry Durker did it just the other way, right? He was a broadcaster, then he managed. Correct. For the Astros. He knows the game, that's for sure. I'm surprised he hasn't had a another managerial opportunity somewhere. Oh, what a play by Goldschmidt and a race to the bag. Chafin beats Gomez. Yeah, not only does he hit, but he's got a gold glove over there as well, and a beautiful play for out number two. And watch how early he gets his baseball over to Chafin, so he's able to grab the baseball, then worry about finding a bag and able to beat the Swift. Carlos Gomez to first base. Chafin gets over there quickly. A good feed from Goldschmidt, and they get the out. So two good plays defensively by Arizona. Two away. Here is Jeanette. Technically, Craig Council went from broadcaster to manager, although he would not give you the broadcaster part. He was. Only a filling guy. Never, never took the full title of media, radio, and TV. Correct. Not like you. You've embraced your new world as media personality. 
journalist. Yeah. <laughs> Not hardly. Bob Euchre's in the Radio Hall of Fame. He still doesn't accept radio personality. Right. He's a player. Players are players. Once, always players. Once you're a player, you're always a player. <laughs> that whole media thing is uh, that's kind of an insult. <laughs> one one pitch. Jeanette takes ball two. How do you take the day, uh, media? Oh, I embrace it. You like it? I'm honored to be a part of the prestigious group known as media. Says so right on my badge. Yeah, mine too. Also says no autographs. So everybody can stop asking me to get stuff signed. I just show them the credential. I'd love to, but I can't. But I actually could, but I just really don't want to. Jeanette fouls that one away. Have you ever gone up to a player and asked for an autograph? Only in a rare instance when it involves a child. Oh, you're going to play that card. That's it. That's, I've done it maybe two or three times in my entire career. But you had a, a young kid with you. Correct. Okay, that's different. Yeah, like, can you meet, you know, little Johnny here? And he's right. a big fan. And. You'd really make his day. That's a lot different. Yeah. Fly ball center field. Easy for Pollock. One, two, three inning for Chapin. Seven shutout innings for Diamondbacks pitching at stretch time here in Phoenix. For the Brew Crew tonight, a four hit shutout by the Diamondbacks pitchers. So we thought our Marshfield Clinic shining moment of the game. Check this out. Foul ball by Enciarte. Snag over the railing with a death defying catch. He's wearing a Diamondback shirt, but he makes plays like a Brewers fan. Pressed his wife, didn't he? He's like, honey, you could have fallen. Nice play. I got a nice insurance policy out on you, so you keep making those plays. <laughs> Corey Knables back out for a second inning after he struck out the side last inning. Brewers have racked up 13 K's between Fires and Knable. But down 5 nothing. I believe that was Crash Davis who said strikeouts are fascist. Doesn't much matter here tonight. Key hits by the Diamondbacks from some of their young players. We have Hernandez, Enciarte, those two hits, two out hits. 
Tomas had a home run, the rookie, right fielder. Aaron Hill had a two out single to score a run into fifth. Pennington will start it, then Goldschmidt, and then Pollock. And a shot, base hit. Pass Lynn. Hey, reserve your spot at Miller Park for the Brewers' big showdown with the Chicago Cubs. That's next Thursday, July 30th through Sunday the 2nd. As the Brew Crew face off against Chris Bryant and their division rivals from the Windy City. Call 414-902-4000. Go to Brewers.com for tickets. It's been a while since we've seen the Cubs. Joe Madden and the Cubs. Yeah, they're right in the middle of the pennant race. Yeah, that was uh, before Chris Bryant, right? That's right. Yeah, I have not seen Chris Bryant yet. Cubs are nine out of the division, but they're right there in the wild card race. Yeah, first week in a match, right? We saw him in uh, Wrigley Field. That was in the Matt LePay era of Brewers broadcasting. Yeah, he's here tonight. The voice of the Badgers. Getting ready for a weekend here on Brewers TV. Where getting are you a, going? Getting an early start on that per diem. There's Matty. <laughs> did, you, did you give him half your men money? Oh, you didn't tell me about uh, that money, did you? You put me in a bad spot here. Matt doesn't even know we get meal money. And now he does. <laughs> we, we don't really get meal money. Matt. It's all about being honest up here. Come on. <laughs> You're on your own. 3-0 to Goldsmith. Could be swinging 3-0. Runner goes and a strike. Throw to second. Not in time. Stolen base for Pennington. I don't see too many guys taking off on a 3 0 count. And uh, he takes off and able to beat it. Throw a little bit high from Lucroy, but not sure it would have mattered. And now a runner at second base. Late. Goldschmidt with an RBI will take the National League lead in that category. He's currently tied with Nolan Arenado of the Rockies. Colorado was off tonight. 11 games in the big leagues. Eight teams have the night off. And that misses ball four. Goldsmith draws the walk. Two on, nobody out against Knable here in the seventh. Here's Pollock. Is it too early to look at wild card standings, Rock? No. You're in? Go ahead. I mean, we are approaching the trade deadline. That had a lot to do with maybe who's going to make trades, who's not, right? That second wild card team and uh, has kept a lot more teams involved in you know, the playoff hunt, whether they trade players or not. A lot more teams feel as though they're still in it. Pirates, Cubs are in right now. If the season should end today, but it doesn't. Giants, Mets, and then you start to get into the gray area right there. If you're the Braves, what do you do? If you're the Padres, it's a lot of ground to make up. Yeah, you're under 500. I mean, it's going to be an uphill battle. Could be a three team postseason from the Central Division again. There's a base hit. Pollock into a right center. Extra bases for him. It'll be a double and an RBI. And it is now 6 0 Arizona. AJ Pollock has his second extra base hit. A triple and a double now. 
Second inning for Corey Knievel. He's not really used to that. He hadn't done that a whole lot. Outstanding his first inning and still does not have it out. His second inning work with a run in in second and third. LeBron had to get on his horse just to cut that ball off. Otherwise, another run scores. So two hits and a walk to start this inning. Here is Yasmani Tomas with runners at second and third. Ten hits for Arizona now. If you're just joining us, the Brewers made a trade today. The first chip in the trading period, you would think. Aramis Ramirez sent to the Pirates. Brewers got a minor league pitcher who will report to double A. Hard throwing right handed pitcher. Ramirez is headed back to Milwaukee currently. And then I think he's going to try to be, at least the reports are, he's going to try to be in Pittsburgh by Saturday to be in the lineup by Saturday night. And now the Pirates have. Their third base situation back together. Down goes Tomas. A strikeout for Knable. All of his outs are strikeouts. Gives it four now. The second trade of the day in the big leagues. First one was Scott Casimir going from the A's to the Astros, and then Aramis Ramirez to the Pirates. Jonathan Barrios, converted third baseman. Will be headed to double A Biloxi and David Goforth was called up Brewers choosing to go with an extra reliever instead of a position player. So go forth a relief pitcher in the big leagues. Ground ball to third nice pick by Perez and the long throw is a good one. Two outs still runners at second and third. That's the first out by the Diamondbacks. That wasn't a strikeout since the third inning. <laughs> Incidentally, this is the seventh time that Corey Knable has gone more than one inning. More than I thought. And there's the aforementioned go forth. Nick Ahmed now with two outs. And on the first pitch, he skies to right. And Knable will get out of it. So he allowed the first three batters to reach, gives up a run. But that's it. Two innings for Knable tonight. Been an ugly night for the Brew Crew tonight. First to four against the Diamondbacks. The second of four tomorrow. We're on the air at eight o'clock in the Central Time Zone. Our Miller Lite. What's on tap? 
Jimmy Nelson against Patrick Corbin. Randall Delgado is on the mound for the D-backs currently. And bullpen uh, been pretty decent. 39 appearances for Delgado in a 291 earned run average. 42 strikeouts for 21 walks in 46 in the third innings for Randall Delgado. Delgado can rush it up there into the mid 90s. Gene Segura will lead off for the Brew Crew. It's been an interesting statistical night for the Brewers. Scoreboard, the most important statistic is that run column, and that's not going so well. But on the pitching side, the Brewers. For the first time since 1974, which is the, the first year that you can track such things, according to our buddies at Stats Inc., it's the first time in franchise history that they have three consecutive innings striking out the side in three consecutive innings. So, what does that get you? Nothing. In two of those innings, the Diamondbacks were able to put up four runs. That's what it gets you. A rare occurrence. Yeah. But it didn't come how you'd like it to come with you know, three up, three down innings, all strikeouts. And it was one of those, the six for Corey Knable. You don't normally see a lot of offense and Production in concert with a lot of strikeouts. That's a rare combo. Some guys are making contact and some aren't. 2 1 pitch inside almost hit him. That Delgado that uh, that arm angle where he gets some good velocity with some pretty good movement. That ball had some movement going in on Gene. That natural sink on the arm side. And Segura fouls it out of play. Delgado is is a good example of prospect status hype. And then what? A player actually turns out to be in the major leagues. Segura grounds to third. And close play out at first. Segura thinks he's safe. And they might go ahead and take this one to a review. Take a look at the replay. Craig Council alerts the crew chief that he'll have his team look at it. Let's see. Looks like they got him. Looks like he's out. And no challenge. But remember, Rock, Randall Delgado, when he was coming up through the Braves minor league system, he was the talk of that system. Like he was going to be a starter in the big leagues for a long time. And then the Braves traded him with uh, a couple other minor league players and, and Martin Prado. Matter of fact, Nick Ahmed, the starting shortstop, was in that deal. Prado was the big piece though. And Delgado for Chris Johnson and Justin Upton. Man, I remember the talk when that trade went down. The Diamondbacks stole one from the Braves right there. They got Delgado and Prado, who had been an all star in Atlanta. And it just hasn't materialized that huh? way. I mean, here he is. Now pitching out of the bullpen, he, he didn't have enough success to stick in the rotation. And has really basically been a reliever for the Diamondbacks after his first year here in 2013. A matter of uh, throwing strikes, we talked about, you know, when he came on, you know, a lot of walks, a lot of strikeouts. Not a good combination, men on base. Been pretty good out of the bullpen this year, though. I mean, maybe he's found his niche. 
He's got all the pitches, but you know, very inconsistent with the off-speed stuff. Of course, and we were saying that about Godley tonight. There's that slider from Delgado. Good pitch. Now it's a good thing to remember as we get into the trading period here before the trade deadline, July 31st. There are always a lot of talk about prospects. You, you can't take that as fact. I mean, you can try to label them, try to pro, uh, project what they'll be in the big leagues, but at the end of the day, they're not big leaguers, and you just never know. Perez strikes out for the second out of the inning. They had a change up that time. Hey, a reminder that tomorrow is no fee Friday. Tomorrow from 9 a.m. to midnight, you can purchase tickets to any remaining Brewers home game this year. And the Brewers will cover the cost of the ticket transaction fees. To get your no fee tickets, go to Brewers.com tomorrow. First game of a road trip tonight. And the Brewers down 6 0. Hector Gomez will pinch it. Fires goes five. Canable. Two innings. And Delgado finds that outside corner. 94 on the corner. Now those are pitches. The last one to Perez and that one to Gomez. It uh, shows you that he's got to stop. There's a good slider right there. Just inconsistent. That's what it's all about up at this level. You know, consistency. Able to you know, do it over and over again. And he has not been able to do that. Well, Delgado is only 25. He certainly has a chance to figure it out. And as you mentioned, Rock, he's had a great year out of the bullpen. And maybe he could emerge as a starter again. He has a golden arm and he's got a lot of movement. See what he does with Gomez here. Fastball fouled away. I think this time of year is a lot of fun. Brewers would rather not be sellers, but there's a lot of across baseball just from a big picture perspective. It's a lot of fun to think about who's going where and how one player could impact a team. So many World Series winning teams have been impacted by trades this time of year. As Gomez strikes out, and the inning is over, and that's a one, two, three inning. Brewers looking uninspired tonight in Phoenix.
not easy to get Augie to stay up past 10 o'clock. You know, he's, he's an early riser, you know. <laughs> yes, he is. David Goforth is here, just arrived today, and he is in the ball game. And I see his numbers down in the minor leagues. Can't get much better than that. I mean, a one or a 237 earned run average. A 213 opponent batting average down in Colorado Springs in, in 31 games down there. Played his college ball at Ole Miss. David Goforth from Philadelphia, Mississippi. Facing Oscar Hernandez to start the inning. Hernandez had the big hit in this game in the fourth inning. Fires was going along pretty well. He he was down one nothing, but he had five strikeouts. And he had an out with two on at the bottom of the order. Looking like a, a way out of the inning. Instead, Hernandez on a 3-2 pitch singled and drove in a run. And then Enciarte had a two-out single and an RBI. And then another run came in on an error. And just like that, yeah. the game got away from Fires. Three runs scored. It was 4 nothing at the time. They've added two more since. Now, if he gets Hernandez in that at bat, it's still a... It would have stated a one to nothing game. I mean, that was the big blow of the night. And down he goes on strikes. It's the third time he has struck out. Goforth gets into the strikeout act. Well, you can see Miller Park and Lambeau Field like you've never seen them before. Sign up to go over the edge and raise money for Special Olympics Wisconsin. Registration is now open. Visit foxsportswisconsin.com slash events. For details. Great cause. And we are behind it 100%. Great athletes. If you want to be inspired, go watch a, a Special Olympics event. All right. Enthusiasm and effort. And just uh, sheer joy of just yep. being able to compete. Great lesson for all of us, actually. Chris Owings is pinch hitting. Oh, and to the count. Canable had four K's, fires ten, and go for it, strikes out his first batter. Fifteen strikeouts tonight. Diamondback struck out 14 times last night against the Marlins in a loss. But six runs on 10 hits. Go for it's not a big guy, but he, he's got good stuff. Came out of the 2011 draft. Same year Taylor Youngman was the first pick. Go forth win in the seventh round. Fifth big league outing of the season. He's 26. Good numbers in Colorado Springs. It's a tough place to pitch. But 31 games all out of the bullpen. See, he's got that split fingered grip. He's got a curveball to go with the fastball. There's a split. One thing you like about Goforth's line in AAA, and again, the PCL is a hitter's league, especially out west. Colorado Springs is the most friendly hitter's park in the world. And yet, a lot fewer hits than innings pitched for go for it. There's a base hit. On a two strike pitch owing singles to left. And a base runner with one away. For the top of the order in Ciarte.
Enciarte had a big hit in this game. Two out. RBI single. It came with two strikes and it drove in a run. And then on that play, Gomez committed his second error of the night that led to the unearned run on Fires line. Who gave up five, four earned in his five innings. And just one of those nights offensively for the crew just haven't been able to get anything going. Middle of the order, very quiet tonight. And they still have an inning to go. You never know what can happen, but it's been one of those nights at the plate for the crew and the team that's been swinging the bat pretty well. Para hit by a pitch. Thought he might have to come out. He's been limping around a little bit, but able to stay in. And his return to Arizona. 0 for 2 tonight. Familiar in these surroundings for sure. Go for it, misses away. Three balls, no strikes on Enciarte. Everything is final in the big leagues for the most part. There's only one other game. In progress, Padres, Marlins, Marlins lead four nothing. Boy, San Diego continues to struggle. There's a walk on four pitches. Third time on base for Enciarte tonight. First and second, one out. Second base. I saw where the Cardinals beat the Royals tonight. 4-3. Lackey got the win. Rosenthal with 30 saves now. St. Louis, the best record in the big league. 61 wins, 34 losses. A runaway train, maybe. Looked like the Pirates, after taking three out of four, were going to give them a run. They still might. But then the Pirates got swept in Milwaukee. Pittsburgh opened the day today. Six games behind the Cardinals. The yeah, Cardinals 34 and 12 at home. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Pirates did win tonight. Liriano beat the Nationals. Into center field. That's going to fall. A base hit. And they'll hold the runner around third. It's going to load the bases here. Cliff Pennington with his second hit in as many at bats. And here comes Paul Goldschmidt with the bases loaded. Well, this will be a good test for it. Go for it. And he's got to throw him strikes, too. Nowhere to put him. Which makes Goldschmidt even a tougher out. Go forth against Goldschmidt. Six nothing Diamondbacks. And the National League RBI leader at the plate. Luke Croy wants to chat. Go for it. Is uh, struggling with his command after that strikeout to start the inning. Yeah, strikeout. Then the base hit by Owings, and all of a sudden he hasn't been able to get that strike one going for him. He walked in Ciarte on four pitches, and then the base hit by Pennington's got him in trouble. Two balls and a strike on Goldschmidt. No 
Center field. Gomez makes the catch, tagging at third and scoring. Owings is in. Goldschmidt now has the RBI lead all by himself. He just passed Nolan Arenado. 73 RBIs for Goldschmidt makes it seven to nothing, Arizona. And fastball down, just uh, dropped the head of the bat on it and smoked that one into center field. That's such a short, compact swing for a guy that generates that kind of power. by Perez in the left field. Another run scores. A.J. Pollock's having a night. He's a home run away from the cycle. As he has an RBI single here with two away. Makes it eight to nothing Arizona. Last three at bats. Triple double single. Two RBIs for Pollock tonight. Here is Tomas. Diamondbacks media relations issuing a, an interesting note on their starter tonight, Zach Godley. So you wonder how good he was, comparatively speaking. A guy making his major league debut here tonight after just three double A starts. Most of his professional work had come in single A or lower, so. He is the first pitcher in the modern era. This is courtesy of Elias or verified by Elias. First pitcher in the modern era since 1900 to throw at least six scoreless innings in his major league debut with no walks and at least seven strikeouts. So been a lot of pitchers to throw shutout innings maybe six innings but it included some damage some walks and very little strikeouts but there are only two pitchers. To have six or more innings with no walks and six strikeouts even. Mike Wright did it earlier this year with the Orioles and Jeff Pico. So when you come up and you've had just three double A starts and you've done something that nobody's ever done in the right. big leagues. Amazing. I mean what a night. Well, just to be able to keep your composure and I mean here's a guy that had spent most of his season in A ball. He comes into this big ballpark. Scoreboards and everything. I mean, it's, it's it can be an, an intimidating thing for a young pitcher. Handled it well. I think say the same thing about the way Taylor Youngman been yeah. handling things. They just never know the makeup of a guy. I mean, he goes down in the minor leagues. He's so so like like Youngman. Godley had some pretty good numbers down in the minor leagues this year, but you never know how they're going to handle getting to the major leagues. Are they going to be intimidated? Going to be nervous? Are they going to be able to handle it or not? And seen some good things from a couple of young pitchers this year. Tomas strikes out. A couple of runs in for Arizona. We are headed to the ninth.
by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Book your stay now. Thursday night lights inside Chase Field in downtown Phoenix. All Diamondbacks tonight. Eight nothing. And a combined four hit shutout so far for three Arizona pitchers. And now the fourth coming out of the pin, Dominic Leone, who uh, came to the Diamondbacks in the Mark Trumbo deal. And Les Pitts uh, for Leone on the 22nd. That was yesterday. And pitched an inning and two thirds scoreless. And third game for him. And He's been roughed up a little bit, you know, two and two thirds. But again, his last appearance yesterday was scoreless. Gerardo Pardo will lead off after being hit by a pitch in the sixth inning. Looked like it might knock him out of the game. He's been able to to stay. Leon got ejected last night. Talked about the, uh, the the bean ball. Jose Fernandez in route to seven innings and 11 strikeouts. He hit David Peralta and then Leon came back out and he drilled Christian Yelich and was immediately ejected from the game. So an incomplete night last night for Leon. But he's back on the mound tonight. One and one to Parra. Misses blowing away. This is one of those. There's always tomorrow games. Thank goodness for that. Hey, chalk it up to jet lag today, right? All right. I'll go for that. A tough loss yesterday at Miller Park. And Parra with a base hit. His first hit of the night. Goes one for three, continues his hitting ways. Get a good night's sleep tonight uh, and go get him tomorrow. Diamondbacks, barring a big comeback here, going to take three of the first four from the Brewers this season. And Brewers beat him in that 17 inning game at Miller Park, the last game of that series in Milwaukee. And that Martin Maldonado walk off home run. That was the game Matt Garza, you know, finished. He worked out of the bullpen. Mm -hmm. Garza back in the rotation. Pits very well in his return. Against the Indians, six shutout innings. Had a walk off home run tonight in the big leagues. Jose Altuve with his first career walk off. Astros stay hot. That team is quite a story. They acquired Scott Casimir from the Athletics today. It's good the organization is showing the players that they're willing to step up and help out. They are. I don't know if they expected to contend this year. I think they felt like maybe next year was going to be their year. But they are very much contending. As a matter of fact, their win tonight, combined with the Angels' loss tonight, Twins beat the Angels. Houston is just two games back, make it just one game back of the Angels, who have been hot. That was a walk off against the Red Sox for Altuve. They swept Boston. Oh 
Luke Croy on the ground off the glove of Leon, and that's going to go for a base hit. That looked like a routine double play, but Leon tried to field it himself, and it works out to the benefit of Jonathan Luke Croy, his first hit of the night, and two on here for the Brewers in the ninth. Hey, you're right. I mean, had the pitcher not knocked it down, it would have been a double play ball. Relatively routine double play at that, but that's all about reactions. Let's say the Brewers get something going, give the Diamondbacks something to think about tonight. Yeah, make them use one more pitcher. Braun coming up. One of his uh, tougher nights at the ballpark. 0 for 3, three strikeouts. He's seen a lot of pitches. He's had the really good long battles at the plate. He's seen 23 pitches tonight in his three at-bats. Just missing some pitches to hit and chasing a couple of those godly curveballs. He didn't miss that one. That is way back. Braun sends it out of here. Three-run home run on the first pitch he sees from Leon. Number 17 for Ryan Braun. Gives him 60 runs batted in for the season. That's how you salvage a night. 0 for 3 with 3 K's. You come up with a three run homer in your last at bat. Yeah, two of the strikeouts came on curveballs, and Leon started with a hook, and Ryan Braun waiting for it. There it is, right down the middle, and Ryan with a nice, easy swing. That was way back out there, about 10 rows deep. Para and Braun and Luke Croy all coming up with their first hits of the night. And that does get the Diamondbacks bullpen active. Daniel Hudson down there. Doesn't give up at bats. He's always working. Even when you're down eight nothing. They all count. Every at bat counts. No matter what. And here's Adam Lynn. So Braun just took over the most home runs for the club. He and Lynn were tied coming in with 15 or make it 16 apiece. Ryan was 17 now. Nobody out. Three runs are in. Interesting that Braun this year. Of his 17 homers, 13 of them have been on the road. Yeah. Been much better at on the road than at Miller Park this year. Unusual for him. Lind is 0 for 3. Before the inning began, the first four hitters in the Brewers lineup 0 for 11 tonight. And a whole bunch of strikeouts in there as well. Five of them. There's Lind. It's a rocket foul. And a nice new piece of lumber up there. It is Adam Lynn. Not a mark on it. Not a guy to use his pine tar. Was he use the glue stick maybe? I don't know if there's even that on there. Ground ball into the shift. It's Pennington out there in the grass. And Lynn is 0 for 4 tonight. The shift got him. Here comes Gomez. Well, you got Jimmy Nelson tomorrow, partner. Looking to see if he can keep it going on the mound for the Brewers. Tough night tonight. Loesch had a tough one yesterday. Prior to that, the Brewers were going along very well. From their starters. Yeah, Jimmy has been going four and one in his last five starts. 
Giving up 11 runs in 32 innings of work. Actually gave up four runs his last time out in a win against the Pirates. Gomez is one out of three tonight. He doubled in the second inning. Goldschmidt made a terrific play on him, robbing Carlos of a base hit in the seventh. But he does have two errors tonight. Unusual for Gomez. Look out. Leon coming up high and tight on Gomez. And he got him a chase one. Two outs now. Brewers live coming your way as soon as we're done here. Could be in, in a matter of moments. Jeff Grayson, Jerry Augustine standing by. It is almost Jerry Augustine's birthday. Seven minutes away. Pounding coffee back there in Milwaukee. In the air left center hit well long run Pollock and he runs it down. How about that play to end the game. Pollock what a night tonight. A great catch to end the game to go along with three hits and two RBIs. All Diamondbacks tonight. This one one to forget outside of a three run home run by Ryan Braun. A night to forget for Milwaukee. Godley in his major league debut gets the win. Six shutout innings. No walk, seven Ks. Mike fires the loss. And the Diamondbacks take game one of this four game series. Time for Brewers Live. We check in with Jeff Grayson. He's in our Fox Sports Wisconsin studio. Jeff.